When people are fat phobic on this platform, you should be uncomfortable. You should be uncomfortable. It is irresponsible to come on an app where there are vulnerable young people. Dude, I, I'm sorry, dude. Samira needs to do something about these pauses because, like, you're not getting to the point any quicker than just, like, purposeful pauses could do a lot for, like, somebody's dialogue. But, like, the way you're doing it doesn't make any sense. Can we please go into what you mean by fat phobia? Is it literally somebody saying, hey, I had a hard time getting up off my seat today. Hey, I'm trying to lose weight. Is that fat phobic? Like, is it fat phobic to acknowledge the, par the problems of being fat? And then also, why does it matter if it's young people? Wouldn't that be better? Because when young people are young, they're more impressionable. That means when they see fat people complain, they're gonna go oh this makes sense you know what I don't want to be fat anymore because being fat is actually really really negative and also vice versa to that if you're young and you see a whole bunch of fat people claiming that it's irresponsible to claim to be fat phobic then again they're gonna listen to your point so if anything it's just like a win-win for you people see the right side and people see the wrong side I mean obviously I want people to see the right side but it's literally a dub for her but you know what this is Samira and before anybody asks I know there are going to be people that are asking, what is that on your face, David? It's a pimple patch, and it's in the shape of a cloud. It's a cloud. It's a cloud. I have a cloud on my face, and uh, I have an acne right here. And I've been breaking out for like a solid week. I don't know if that gets like creatine or something like that. Because I started taking creatine and then boom, like out of nowhere, just pimples all over my face and stuff like that. Like I'm 14 again, except without the beating off five times a day. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, let's, the creatine isn't that, that's not going to affect the creatine, right? But anyway and be so fat phobic i really i just really want to know i just really want to know what she means by fat phobic and then also also is this a bracelet on your finger right here dude now you can never tell you 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 can never tell dude uh samira likes to think that she's i guess like a civil rights leader but she likes to code switch quite a bit and that's fine like you will have moments in your life where maybe you find it a little bit more appropriate to talk like oh hi how are you excuse me can I get some, like, assistance over here instead of talking the way this she does, which is, like, a civil rights leader from the 1960s or something like that? It's obviously not an appropriate way to talk to people out in public, but it seems like that's the way she wants to be portrayed on her TikTok. Maybe it's just, like, a performative act for her. I don't know. It seems pretty disingenuous when people do this, like, it seems really, really disingenuous to me when people talk in a particular format, but IRL, in real life, they don't do that. They, they have no intention of ever talking to somebody like that in real life because it is very condescending to talk here in this store. Do you really think you cannot sell plus size clothing? Uh, I am offended. Like nobody talks like that. That's cringy. That's really cringy. And it's really cringy to talk like this. Unless your name is actually Martin Luther King, and even him, he he didn't even directly talk like this. I don't understand why she she picked up this particular type of like vocal pattern, but it's cringe. It's cringe, Samira. It is. It doesn't increase the impact. It doesn't make it seem like you're cooler. It doesn't make it seem like you're what you're saying is more profound. It just makes it cringy. Okay, just say what you gotta say, and then just just go off that, dude. It's, it's just i'm sorry dude like i play the video and i'm like did i click play like is there a play did i click play no it's just her pause for like five seconds dude if the video is literally just you and then like 40 40 40 40 to 45 percent of the video is just pauses then I'm, I'm not fucking with it i don't know your point is like it doesn't you didn't even make a point yet the point that you're making is you don't want people on TikTok to be fat phobic. Okay, let's go into what is fat phobia. Talk about what fat phobia is. Talk about why you don't want them to say fat phobic stuff instead of just sitting there going and pausing every four or five seconds because you think it's more impactful literally without saying anything at all. You can't have pauses without having actually anything impactful. That shit is bullshit. Like, <laughs> that's like somebody saying, I want toaster strudels in my mouth do you see like it's not there's nothing there there's nothing there it's not there's no impact be better be better <laughs> to spread such hate and it's not you know like it's not hate can you go into why it's hate what are you, what are you, again i'm gonna need to know what you mean by fat phobia dude i re i'm really gonna have to know what you mean by fat phobia is it literally somebody going hey i went to the doctor my doctor told me i'm fat therefore i'm gonna try to lose weight to become unhealth to become healthier is it hey 
I had to buy two plane tickets, but I'm trying to lose weight so I can reduce that to one. What, what exactly is the fat phobia? Is it somebody literally going on the internet and going, hey, um, yeah, I'm like really unhealthy at 300 pounds and I'm going to try my hardest to lose that weight because I'm going to be as healthy as I possibly can for people, for me and my people around me. Is that the fat phobia? Because if that is, if that's what that is, nah, nah, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I love, I love being not, not so blig. I really just want to be a real slim, you know, beautiful, lubricated, nice muscled up person. But no, nope, can't do that. Can't, nope, got to be fat phobic, I guess. Harm to spread such hate and harm. You're, couldn't, you say, couldn't we say the same thing about you though? Like you do, like when these people talk, right? It's almost as if they don't see it from the other side. And the other side is uh, like normal people. It's just normal people that go like, yeah, you know, being fat is probably not the best and it's probably like hurting me and, you know, it's okay though because I just like eating like this, which is fine by the way. If like, if you're somebody that wants to smoke cigarettes or you want to do drugs or you want to do this and that, I would never object to those things, obviously within a certain limit, of course, but it's your life. Like people should have the ability to choose what they want to do. And if you know the risks and most people do for when it comes to like smoking cigarettes or alcohol indulgence and things such and so forth like most everybody knows that it's not good for you like literally you'll never find anybody going like yeah i'm just smoking cigarettes because you know i love it, it just tastes really good in my mouth and sometimes when i wake up in the middle of the night i cough and blood comes up i don't know why it's probably had nothing to do with this like everybody knows it's bad for you everybody but they still do it which is fine because you know it's a bad thing at the bare minimum i would really love for these fat activists to acknowledge the problems of being overweight like i don't know not being able to properly clean yourself, having to walk upstairs with an with an extra 100 or 200 pounds on your body, literally doing nothing, health complications due to being fat. There are plenty of things like hormonal imbalances, right? These people always sit there and go, my hormones are out of whack. I don't know why. Because you're fat as shit. Or they go, oh, uh, yeah, I can't get proper sleep. I have to sleep with a CPAP, which might be good for like most people, by the way. Like there's a lot of people that could benefit from a CPAP, not just fat people. But these people literally say this shit all the time. And I always go, dude, you're fucking fat. Like, yeah, you're gonna have to have, you have to deal with a lot of these issues because of the weight that accumulated in your body. But anyway, so Myra, go off, queen. <laughs> and do it under the guise of caring about people. What do you, well, like, if you're saying that, okay, I do not claim that if I'm saying what I'm saying, it's under the guise of helping people or caring about people's health. I just want people to be more informed. If anything, it's just more information. And then also, I find this entertaining. I love doing this stuff. And then also, like, these people are cringy, so I find a lot of enjoyment in this. Very satisfying for me to watch cringy people talk about cringy stuff. And it's always, it's, it's no matter what it is, it's always going to be really, really satisfying to me. It's like watching an early 2000s rom-com, you know? Like, it's just, it just feels good to see Matthew McConaughey in the same 18 movies over and over and over again, because he's very attractive. And it doesn't matter what movie he's ever in, he's always going to be more attractive than the other female role like I don't care I don't know I don't know why so many people don't acknowledge this if you're watching a rom-com you don't give a fuck what the woman looks like you're watching it for the guy the guy is hot you're watching it because he's attractive don't lie to me and making it about people not caring about themselves you most definitely don't care about yourself dude if you're if you're overweight right I feel like these people just don't understand the real problems that they're going to be putting themselves under. Like, it's not just about you, okay? Now, granted, it is your body, your choice, whatever bullshit you want to use to justify your existence as a person that is literally dying. You can go ahead and do that, right? Uh, there are plenty of excuses. If you need an excuse, you'll find one. But it, it, these people are, like, totally ignorant about the fact that, that you have other people that are relying on you. You, you are literally, like... You are the center of some people's entire lives, right? Maybe you have family members. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have parents maybe you have friends maybe you have all these people around you that are relying on you to stay alive and in working condition at least without any significant trauma to your body and when you walk around at this size you are most definitely imbuing upon yourself negative passive effects on your body like your health bar is like literally ticking down every moment of the day 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 every fucking day because you want to eat more food. And that's really what it comes down to. There's no other way to say it than that. Dude, if you're big, if you're fat, I don't care how many songs you can make about how big, how big backed you are or whatever. It's not, it's not cute. It's not cute to be fat as fuck. And then like singing about this shit that it's not a good, it's not a good thing to be walking around purposefully, purposefully ignorant, like knowing that you're ignorant about the problems of your health. Like it's an issue, dude. It's a big issue and you can do it. You can do it, but it's just very, very ignorant, and it's very, it's purposefully ignorant. Like, I know you know it's wrong, 
and it's like it's completely ignoring the fact that you have people relying on you but you can go ahead and do whatever you want i think everybody should have the freedom of choice i just hope that these people would acknowledge it like if they started every if they started their videos or at least put it in some place in their video like disclaimer I do not condone being fat, and also, being fat is not a good thing. But, I am still going to talk about how amazing it is to be fat. Big back bitches. Like, if you said that, that'd be like, okay, fine. But, you don't. You just talk about how great it is to be fat, while complaining about how terrible it is to be fat. Like, okay. But you never complain about the things that are, like, really, really, really uh, terrible about being fat. Like, the health issues. You always complain about, like, the bullshit ones. Like, oh, man, society. Somebody called me fat. Like, oh, I got a comment today. Somebody said I was fat. Dude, like, what do you want? Like, what do you really want, dude? People, you know, people comment on me and they always go like, David, you're musty. Okay, I know I'm musty. Okay, yes, I understand. Like, the point I'm making is you're going to be made fun of for certain things. And that's okay. Like, it is what it is. That's the nature of the internet. And plus, Samira's like a big content creator with an amazing voice. People. And making it about people not caring about themselves. You don't get to do that. I do get to do that. You see how easy it was, dude? You don't care about yourself. You don't. And you might, you know, no, let me let me rephrase that. You probably care about yourself in other ways, and that's okay. Like, you probably don't smoke or, like, cigarettes and stuff. Like, I'm sure you care about yourself in other places. But it's just interesting to me when people go, I'm healthy, and they talk about things that are, like, completely irrelevant when everything else is, like, falling apart around them, right? It'd be like somebody going, I'm going to fix my house. And their house is, like, deteriorated. It's, like, slanted over on one side. There's a fire in the fucking kitchen or whatever. And they go, let's paint it. Like, yeah, it's going to help. Sure, it's going to, like, improve it. Yeah, I agree. Um, but there are other issues that you need to be addressing literally right now because your house is, like, falling apart drastically. And painting it might do a little something, but it's not going to be, like, the, num the number one thing that you need to do, which is, like, you know, fix the entire house, like the structure, the the entire foundation of your house needs to be improved rather than just painting it like that. The painting will help, but it's not really like the, the number one thing you do. Fuck the paint. Let's get the foundation checked up on. And the same thing, like when you're fat and you're talking about some I care about myself, where? Like, what do you care about yourself exactly? Because you shave your armpits. OK, yeah, that's cool. Good. Th thumbs up. Great. I'm glad you shaved your armpits because you wear glasses. Great. Good eyesight. You brush your teeth. Great. Awesome. You're dying. I can give a fuck about your teeth. You know, your teeth are literally fucking nothing in comparison to the rest of the stuff around it. Like, you know, I think you could probably take, I mean, you should probably still brush your teeth, but I'm like giving a scenario here, a good example, which is like, if this is, if these are the things that you're focusing on, dude, you got way worse things, dude, trust me. <laughs> dude, I'm, it's just like, it's so cringe, dude. What is, why are you even doing, you, you didn't even bring up a point. All you're saying is that young people are watching content, you don't like that, and then you don't like it when people bring up health. There's no point. You're not even talking about anything. Like, there's no reason why you're upset about this stuff. You didn't disclose the reason. You're just upset, which is fine. You can be upset, but I don't know why the fuck you would make a seven-second pause on a point that didn't even make sense. That. And it's tolerated too much. And it's made light of heart too much. Fat phobia should make you uncomfortable because it is intertwined with every single other system of oppression that exists. Name them. Please name them, dude. What other systems of oppression exist, dude? So like misogyny, gay phobia, black phobia, all of them, really? All of that stuff? Every, all the, all the series of oppression, dude? It cannot be that interwoven between all that stuff. You might have a case on systemic issues because it is systemically imbued within society that Fat people can't have, they, they have a hard time navigating society. I agree with you on that, but it's such a bullshit point because like the amount of times I've heard these people say this shit, for one, uh, society was not made for fat people for the very reason of they just weren't around. Therefore, why the fuck would we make society for fat people that aren't here? Being fat is a very new phenomena, very new matter of fact. And the ability for accessibility devices to be created within society would be have, we would have to like upend the entire, like the entire base the entire base point of our society and just like completely redesign everything and maybe we can do that we already have like some accessibility like ramps you know we have ramps we have a lot of elevators now we have escalators but like how far do we go now because you guys want us to literally you guys want us to liter literally imbue our entire ecosystem our entire like it's just like unsustainable and i always say this right uh, it's easier to change yourself than it is to change society. And, you know, even if we did, 
go through and we did like manage to redesign all of these buildings, bridges, whatever the fuck else you wanted to change for fat people, that's not necessarily going to improve you. All if anything, that's just going to that's just going to enable you to continuously be fat and maybe even gain more weight because now there's more reason to be fat since like why the fuck wouldn't I be fat now? Like there's elevators literally on the street now. I could just like get in the elevator and take me where I need to go. It wouldn't it just be better instead to instead of complaining about things that are literally your problem, wouldn't it be better to just like lose the weight yourself or at least like improve your chances of being able to navigate through society and then also get healthy as a byproduct of that. I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm just trying to look for the best solution for all of us here. You know, instead of like thousands and millions and billions of dollars in tax dollars, just going to like, I don't even know what you want. Like, do you want like the Wally fucking seats where people sit down and they just get, get transported to places while they eat like pop tarts? Do you want that? Or do you want to be able to walk? I don't fucking know. It seems like being able to walk is probably way better than like having to upend our entire Whatever, man. It is related to sexism, really? racism, yeah. homophobia, Damn. xenophobia. Damn. What else? Classism. Damn. And so when you talk about one, you talk about it all. I think it's such a bullshit thing, dude. You can you can focus on one particular aspect and not like it's so bad when somebody goes. I want to talk about racism. I want to talk about racism. And then you got that one person going, yeah, fat phobia, sexism. It's all linked. It's all together. And you go like, oh, hold up now. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, you know, I think that we got to maybe focus on one thing at a time. Like, I'm not saying they're not linked, but like, let's focus on it. It's just ingenuous. And it also, it's never going to actually pan out the way you want to because if you can't like focus on one thing without having everything else be around it, then you're never going to be, what you have right there is a wish list. You're not actually focusing on a problem. You're not focusing on one thing. You have a giant, you have a fucking wish list of things that you want to fix. Sexism, homophobia, racism, ableism, societalism, whatever the fuck. Dude, how the fuck are we going to fix all that shit? And half of those things are not even fucking issues, dude. We can't fix capitalism. That's literally our entire social that's our entire economic structure. And not only that, that's the thing that made you what you are. What the fuck? Classism might be an issue. I agree. But like the, the way to get out of classism is have better money management skills. I don't know. Like you fat, maybe spend some more money on other things. Like it's just too easy for a lot of these people to just lump everything else together. And I know why they do it because they feel like if they put, cause like not many people look at fat phobia as an actual thing. Like if you go up to somebody and go like, I was... I was harassed today because I was like, somebody said I was fat and I couldn't like get on the elevator without the elevator, like breaking in half. That's fat phobic. A lot of, most people are like, Oh, whatever, dude. Like whatever you say, dude, like that doesn't, it doesn't carry as much value as somebody saying like I was, you know, uh, uh, sexually harassed or I was, um, you know, like fucking racism or whatever. Like a lot of people go, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. And then they also hijack things like ableism, dude. It's so, it's like such a crazy thing for somebody to be like, yeah, there's no elevator access because I'm like, I'm missing my legs. And I need elevator access. Like we need to stand up. No pun intended. We need to stand up for people in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And then a fat person goes, yeah, we need more elevators. Cause I can't walk upstairs. Like, it's just like, you see that and you go like, I, I mean, yeah, I can't, you, you can, yeah, you could benefit from it. But like, let's, you know, um, you guys can stay on the sidelines. Like we don't really want you in you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it's going to devalue a lot of that shit too. But anyway, which is why I say it is irresponsible, disrespectful, and hateful <laughs> to come on this app. Virtue signaling really hard here too. And there's no reason, like it's, there's literally no reason in this entire video why she's upset. She's not giving an actual reason. She's just saying she's upset and not telling you why or explaining any of it. She's just saying you're a bad person. And we shouldn't tolerate it. And fat phobia is like rooted with all this other stuff. Okay. But like, why? Like, why is it an issue? Like, can you explain why it's a fucking issue? There's a reason why people don't like latch onto your cause because you don't explain shit. You just say it's bad and then tell a few people, oh, it's because racism, sexism, wall, whatever, whatever, all these isms. And then people go, okay, like, but what, like, what the fuck? Like, why though? Why are these even connected? Like, you're not explaining anything. You're not explaining anything. You're just saying that you're upset, which is fine. You could be upset, but it, it, it would be better if you had a reason why and be fat phobic you're thin phobic dude why you why why you mad why are you mad so heavy about this shit dude like lose some weight and that right. is all i have to say on the matter 
dude, you, you like 40% of this video was you not saying anything. It was literally just this. Like, I, I cannot believe how terrible people are to fat people. What are you even doing? Why is that so much pausing, dude? Because I've already said too much on the map. You didn't even say, you didn't say enough. You didn't even tell me why you were upset. You just said you were upset. You, bro, get this woman on my face, dude. Samira is literally, there are some people within the fat acceptance space that are way more tolerable. And there are people way, way, way less tolerable, like Marissa Matthews, for instance, who doesn't even have like a working brain cell to even form sentences or even splotch maker, right? But this woman, very, very good with the words, right? The delivery is really, really good. Uh, the problem is they're not saying shit. Like you're not, you're not saying anything at all. You're, all your points are literally nonsense, nonsense points, feeling based, absolutely no value to them. Licking your lips. What, what you see over there behind the camera, huh? Licking your lips at that ice cream bowl. And people are not uncomfortable enough for me. Uh, dude, man. You know, there's a lot of issues in society. And sometimes I think that we hit a point in our society where everybody needs to be an activist nowadays. And everybody's fighting against something. And that's fine. There's always something to battle against. There's always something that can be improved, which is awesome. Like, great. I'm happy that you're fighting. But like, it kind of seems like we lost track somewhere or like we've lost the plot because at the point we're at right now, if we're fighting over things like fat phobia, I think that we're too successful. I think that we reached a point in society where things have gotten too good because if we're fighting, like we're literally fighting against our own success right now. Like people are so fat that they can't walk upstairs and we're going, this is wrong. Like, why are we even that fat? What the fuck? How'd you even get that big, dude? What are you eating to be this fat? Really? Because like sometimes you, you stay with these people, right? And then you go, I don't know how does people, I don't know how this diet is, you know, like, how are you 300 pounds? Like, how'd you get this fat? Like, I've been with you all day and you, you eat as much as me. But then, then it's those late night sessions where these dudes just be sitting down at the table, just fucking piling food in their mouth, well, inconspicuously or whatever, just spend the whole night in the fridge or whatever, dude, because there's no way you can be. Like, it's not an anomaly. Like, these guys are not, like, outside the realm of normality in the sense of, like, they're just accumulating fat on their body for no other reason than just accumulate. No, they're eating tons and tons and tons of food. So, in order to be at this size, you need to do something extreme. And now you want, do you want something extreme to happen to society in order to alleviate your problem? Which actually, which actually wouldn't even alleviate your problem because your problem is poor money, poor, poor food intake, poor understanding of nutrition. Like it's an ignorance problem. And sometimes these people actually even know what the problems are, but they purposely don't look at the issue and that's fine. Uh, you know, it's a great thing about being in America is that you can actually not ignore, you can actually ignore the problems and just have them fade away when they don't even actually, they don't go away. They don't go away necessarily, but you can just not look at them for a really long time. Eventually they will come back though, because eventually those problems, they keep accumulating. It's like a snowball effect. Eventually, that snowball is going to get so big, and it's going to cause a major problem. But until then, I guess you can complain. They're too comfortable. You're too comfortable being big as fuck. You're too comfortable having that stain on your shirt, dude. You're too comfortable living the lifestyle that you're living. You see how easy it is to, to say that same shit? And I know it talked about ushering people. Why you open your mouth so heavy when you talk? And I know it's uncomfortable to talk about the problems. Why you open your mouth like that, dude? You, you, you talk, you talk like the way your mouth moves is like, you remember those old Japanese videos or those old Japanese movies with like Godzilla and the people would just have these like long exaggerated mouth movements to like try to pair up with the um, English dubs. It's like that. That's what, it, that, that's what I imagine when Samira talks. Also, I'm going to need her to talk way faster, dude. I, sometimes I understand that maybe I talk a little bit fast, right? I've had people say this before, but Samira talks very slow. Almost as if, like, if she talks slow, her words have more impact when that's not really the point. You just take a very long time getting to your point. And it's, like, really frustrating because you never even had a point. So... It's like, I'm just listening to you, okay, saying non-impactful stuff, trying to make it impactful while the entire message of what you're saying is completely mute because you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. To their seats. Sitting. And I know it talked about ushering people to their seats. Sitting people down, but I need you all to get up out of your seats and yeah, it's gonna be a little bit hard for some of your community members, right? Because like even getting out of a seated position is gonna be difficult. Stop being so complicit and complacent when it comes to fat phobia. Stand up and show up. Learn something. 
<laughs> and to learn you that is that wow that should be like the motto of the video she should look in a mirror when she said that you know what i'm talking about everything that she just said in that last like 20 second interval just go stand up look in the mirror when you say that samira like hold your phone out right put it on selfie mode and just say stand up and then you go hold oh, oh wait no maybe i should actually stand up you know learn learn something oh maybe i should learn something this is like the most this is the most fucking projection, dude. Like, literally everything you're saying could be centered back upon you, and it would be way more valuable. Why do you think that I need to learn? What are you talking about, dude? I'm good. I'm healthy, dude. What are you? Blake. Blake. And uh, definitely dying. But, hey, you know, it's what you want to do. You need to unlearn. And it shouldn't be on us to teach you. If it's not you, then who should it be? Like, it, it, that doesn't even make sense, bro. If you don't want us... Okay, look, if you have a problem, okay, and everybody else believes this not to be a problem, you have to be the one that supplies the proof up to why it is because you're the one making the claim. So if everybody else is believing that and you don't make that claim, what the fuck? Why the fuck? Who, who are we even going to learn it from, dude? You're the one that has the problem. If you don't have the solution to the problem, you're just talking. You're just saying words, meaningless words, words that have no value at all. You need to supply the reason why. If you're just saying that you have a problem with something for no other reason than you have a problem with it, that's okay. But nobody's going to listen to you because it's fucking bullshit. It's literally useless information at that point. But it is on you. Why? To stop spewing hateful, false, fat phobic rhetoric. What, can you name some? Call some people out. Say some words, dude. Say some shit like actually tell me what I said or what they said that is fat phobic and go into the reason why it's fat phobic instead of pausing every five, ten seconds, man. And furthermore, being tolerable of it. Like everybody, if you're upset that somebody is tolerant of somebody saying fatness is bad, you know that you're outside that, right? Like this, most people are okay with that. Like most people hear that and go, yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, she can't barely walk. Like she can barely, you know what I'm talking about? Like I remember one time, right? I was working in this establishment and at the end of the day, right? When I had to clock out, you had to take your till out of the register because some, the next guy had to go in and put his till into the register, right? So they would, you would take your till out, you put the little metal sheet on there and there was this woman, her name was Betty. Her, she was really fat. Like she was excessively fat, very big, very voluptuous, very massive woman, okay? And her job was to escort me and possibly other people back to the room, back to the back room so they can count the tills and I can clock out. And I remember thinking about this, right? I thought about how, how she was escorting us. She was basically like a bodyguard protecting the money that we had to walk from the front of the store to the back end of the store. And I always remembered thinking, this woman ain't doing shit. Like, I don't even understand why she's even walking with me right now. This woman literally... Pro she was out of breath from just simply she would have to sit down at the manager table that was her job she would sit down she didn't do shit and i remember her walking me and i thought this this bitch bro this woman could literally just get somebody could just accidentally bump into her and it's over her life is done her life she's on the floor it's over she can't get back up by herself it was impossible she had to have weighed 400 pounds and I'm thinking like, why the fuck are you even here? Like, what do you even do, right? Like, you're not, you're not walking me. If anything, I'm escorting you. I'm doing your job and my job simultaneously. This is impractical. You, why are you even here? And the same thing, I see this a lot. I'm not uncomfortable acknowledging these things as truth because it's important to acknowledge these things as truth. It's important to see that some people are just inadequate for a job position or some people are just not right for this particular aspect of life. And it's really important to acknowledge that because otherwise, if you don't, you're literally just ignorant. You're dumb. That's something that's just, it's not going to help you. You, It's good to have critical thought and go, this woman is not supposed to be in this position or this person can barely breathe while standing up. This is not a good lifestyle to live. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to represent the other side. I want to be healthy. I want to be extra. I want to be uh, move my body around and all this other stuff, right? No, but like, this woman is sitting here telling you that you have to unlearn it and then not telling you. Not telling you why you have to unlearn it, just telling you you're a, you're a bad person for not unlearning it, not telling you the reason why it's bad, not telling you the reason why, you know, she's literally saying that she's not going to be the one that does it, even though she's the one with the problem. It doesn't make any sense. Fact. And then and then pauses for five seconds as if it means anything. Fact. You know, I used to spend my whole life running from this word because... You guys ever play the game Bully? 
You guys ever play that game? It came out in like 2005 or whatever. One of the best Rockstar games, right? This outfit reminds me of one of the uniforms from school, except, you know, I think there might have been a girl at the school that you could like romance or kiss or something in the game that might have looked like her. I don't know. Every day I was made to feel as though it was something worth running from. It, well, it's something to run for. I mean, I don't know about run from, but definitely run for the fat. Yeah, get it off your body, dude. It's not helping you. What are we even talking about? You know what? I, I really find it crazy that these big companies will, because these people hate it. Um, they hate it when these big companies, it's like a give or take, right? These people can't have it both ways. But when the big companies partner with them, they're like, yeah, I'll take that money, dude. Give me the money, right? And I don't even understand what Dove is even going to do when it comes to fat acceptance. Like, what is, what is don't you just make soap? Like, what do you fuck? Like, I guess you guys make like some other type of stuff, but that'd be like, I don't even fucking know, dude. That'd be like uh, the the people that make milk, like Hood. That'd be like Hood sponsoring NASCAR. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what are you guys even doing? Like, we're not filling our car up with fucking milk. We're not like washing shit down with the fucking milk. It's just like Dove. It's just such an easy sponsorship, dude. Dove to reach out just to virtue signal a little bit to get the thing. And I like Dove. I, I got a few of their products in my fucking bathroom, dude. But I don't know, dude. It's just like weird. Like, what are you guys even going to do for fat acceptance? Like, you're going to make more, I guess, grease grease imperial fucking soap to try to fight against it a little bit more because these people have like a large grease spots in their body kind of like hairless cats you know hairless cats how you have to like wipe them down they just have like grease stains on them it's like that except like in the folds or whatever i don't know whatever man and to this day there are still people that would like for me to continue this misguided marathon while they shout fat as if it's the worst thing i could ever be no. it's not the worst thing it's not the worst thing you could be like a lot of other things that are way worse than that like a Nazi, you know, like a 1940s Nazi, I guess, but maybe like, uh, I don't know, man, let me think. I got to think of some things that are, they, there are many things that are worse, obviously. Murderer, yeah, murderers are worse, I guess, yeah, it's way worse, yeah. But like, nobody ever said it was the worst, and I don't like when they always go to the extremes to try to justify their point, because the reason why they go to these extremes is to make their point more valid, and they know that it's, it's, it's very, it's very, like, telling. You would think that because body size discrimination... 90% of women are living in larger bodies. I don't know what the fuck that means. What is larger bodies, by the way? What is that? What is larger bodies? Really? Like, is this global? Or is this in the United States? What kind of stat is this, dude? What? This is like saying, like, 90% of men will never know about having big meats like me. Like, okay, okay I guess. 84% of adults. I absorb what? What does that even mean? 88% of girls age 10 to 17. What? Are, are living in a larger body what is even a larger body is it like 10 pounds over five pounds over 100 pounds over what is a larger body it's more than two-thirds of the u.s population every day there would be legislative protection against it what do you mean legislative protection like we're supposed to go to like bernie sanders and be like hey dude listen man listen we are some fat dudes outside and they are hungry and you know they <laughs> you know they get upset so we need you to go in there and talk to Joe, talk to Big Daddy Joe, tell him that we need some protection, they need some more, whatever they're asking for. Three of them just died, actually. Um, it's actually, if we wait long enough, they'll probably all just die or go home or something like that. Because, you know, like them standing up uh, is going to be, is obviously not, you know what, forget about it, Bernie. Just wait, just wait. Like, you're probably going to outlive half of them, to be honest. How old are you again? Oh, 85? Ooh. Yeah, you're good. You can like you got another five, six, seven years. These people are not gonna make it that far. Like you might that's 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 the dialogue I would go. So that's why I'm joining the What's your belly button? Partnership with NAFA and Flair to NAFA, the National Association uh to advance fat. Why would you ever want to advance fat? <laughs> Such a crazy okay. What a what what a beautiful world we live in. The fat legal ag ag advocacy rights and education project flair man you guys just come up with words dude advanced legal protections across the united states on the basis of body size if you want to be a part of this powerful movement sign the petition in my bio if you want to sign it you can go ahead and sign it but this is some bullshit ass uh this is a bullshit cause because everybody deserves the freedom to thrive yeah but like what would we even fight against? Because like you guys are, you guys have claims that are like completely irrelevant. Like if we even want to go to the big ones, like job discriminations or like medical discrimination, most of you guys, like, even though we live in a society in West here, 
where people don't really do jobs that are like primarily physical, right? Most people are sitting down. Most people are typing on a keyboard. Most people are just behind a counter all day, whatever, right? But there are some jobs still, even those jobs, by the way, where you're typing on your keyboard all day, those do require to a certain degree, a lot of like, you know, a lot of exercise involved. Like you're going to have to still do a lot of work. And even in these scenarios, depending on how fat you are, yeah, you're going to be, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Like it's going to be an issue. So even on job descriptions, like if you don't fit the, the, the role correctly and you go, but I'm as qualified as this person, they got the job before me. Yeah. Because they're not fat. And like you being fat is going to be a problem. There's a reason why when you guys sign up for like health insurance or life insurances or like insurances in general, you guys are always at higher risks of illnesses because according to statistics, you guys are. So it's going to be harder for you guys to find fulfilling jobs or whatever the fuck. Like I've literally seen guys literally say like, oh, I can't stand up for more than like 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time, even 30 minutes at a time, which is like, bro, if you need to stand up or you even need to like go from work, like one end of the job to the next end of the job, it's going to be impractical for you. Then it's probably not going to be the job for you. They're probably going to look at that, right? Or they're going to fire you. So it's, it's just like, it, or like the medical discrimination, which is like, hey, I try to get this surgery, but they wouldn't let me get the surgery because they said that I'd literally die if they put me under anesthesia. Or it would be better if I didn't get the surgery because if I got the surgery... <laughs> It would, I, they don't know if they could actually do it. They would classify that as fat phobia, which is insane to me. Like these people are grasping at straws and they're claiming them to be like major discriminations. When in reality, the doctor's sitting there like, dude, I don't know. Like it's either you die or you die, but like, I don't like, you can just lose weight. We could probably do the surgery. I don't know what's wrong with you. Well, with all disrespect. Um okay, with all due respect. Why would somebody aspire to be clinically obese or unhealthy? That's a really good question, dude. That's a really good question. There is literally no good reason to be fat or like really, really obese because it is literally gonna, it's it's just, it's not, it might not be a death sentence depending on where you are in terms of the size, but it's most definitely going to impede your ability to live life. It's literally like living life on hard mode, just having more difficulties for no reason other than just having the difficulties, which is, I mean, if you want to live a tough life, I feel like there are other things that you could do, but eating more food, I guess, like, is outweighing it. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, why is it that you only see me for my size? Dude, like, 80% of the shit you put on your TikTok is literally about your size. What the fuck? What are you talking about right now, bro? That'd be like Bud Light coming out and going like, why do you guys only focus on the alcohol? Like... You know, we do other stuff. We made, like, coolers one time in, like, 2007. Like, why don't you guys, like, focus on the coolers, okay? Like, stop focusing on the beer. Stop focusing on the fucking alcohol. It's irrelevant. Dude, that's, like, all your content. That's literally what you do. That is your shit. What are you talking about? Go to the companies that sponsor you, okay? Go to the companies, right? And when the companies go, hey, Samira, we want to sponsor you for our, our thing, fat activist. And you go, no, no, because I am more than my weight i am also black do that too just say that you're black and or say that you have toenails and say whatever just like you're all these other things right i don't know why the fuck you're upset about people pointing out that you're fat when like 90 percent of the shit you put out is about being fat uh, okay yeah all right dude i mean that's what you want to do right that's fine that's that's up to you. You can go like see what I'm saying. Just complain. It just to complain. I mean that's that's really what it comes down to. With all disrespect, um, why is it that you only see me for my size? <laughs> These fucking pauses as like I don't. You only got a certain amount of time on TikTok too. You really want to take up that time with just pauses? Why do you attach my size to my worth? A lot of somebody's worth, oh man, I don't know where these people are coming from with this shit, dude. But people have a lot of worth depending on a lot of different things, okay? Usually when you become older, you accrue more intelligence and you become less and less and less ignorant and maybe you specialize in a particular area or job or something like that so you you become more worth in this particular area but if we're talking about like body in general yeah dude like a lot of your value is going to be attributed to what you can do physically speaking and that may not be that may not be like the biggest deal for certain people. Like for instance, if you're working in a job where you just sit down all day, I'm sure it's not that big of a deal. Um or if you're I don't know. There's a lot of places where maybe your physical job, your physical shape is not going to impede your ability to execute that job title or whatever. But in a lot of other places, yeah, dude. And you know, it's also really interesting that like, again, all your content is just dedicated 
to being overweight or fat, which is fine. Like I treasure your existence and being fat. That's awesome. But I don't know why you're upset when people are like making a response to a video where you talking about being fat. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah. To my value, to what I offer to this world. I know the answer. Because we're racist. Because we're fat phobic. Where's your shoulder at here? Okay, whatever. I I know the answer. What is it? And you do too. What is it? And so do lots of other people. Tell us what it is. But when are we gonna make it so I don't have to ask that question? What are you talking about? I thought he was asking the question. What? When are we gonna make it so other people don't have to ask similar questions? Uh, you know, asking questions is like really important sometimes because you don't know what the answers are, right? And sometimes, even though you deduce those questions to be, I guess, not questions that should be answered, I fundamentally disagree with that, especially if we're talking about somebody being clinically obese. I don't even know why you avoided the question. You didn't, you didn't answer the question. And I guess that's the, the main reason here is like you didn't want to answer it because you thought it was disrespectful or something like that. But he's right. You are clinically obese slash unhealthy. That is a true statement. Being the size that you are is not a good thing. I don't know why you think it's a flexing point, but we'll go off, queen. As it pertains to why physical attributes determine their worth. You're dumb. Physical, bro, are you fucking stupid, Samira? Come on, dude. We live in a world that's very physical, okay? Attraction. You're going to want, I know there are some people out there that are like asymmetrical or not asymmetrical, asexual or whatever they call themselves, where they don't think of the other person in a physical format. I think those people are outside the norms. Most people are going to look at other people and think that they look more attractive or less attractive depending on the physical shape of their body. And then also depending on what your body can do. Yeah, that shit has worth. That shit has value, dude. I don't know what the fuck I can tell you, bro. If you're obese, intrinsically, you're going to have less performative value in terms of the physicality than a person that's in shape. I don't know what to tell you on that, dude. So yeah, there is a lot of value. And if you're somebody that's sitting there going, we shouldn't be judging people based off that physical performance, that's fucking dumb. We have entire industries dedicated to that shit. And if you don't think that's something that should happen, dude, that's that's you're outside the norm. That's not normal. What they can do, who they can inspire, who can aspire to be them. What? When are we going to stop it? Do you have plus sizes at this location? Or? I, this is the this is the video that I saw where she code switches, right? She doesn't talk like she normally does on the TikToks where she goes, who is there to inspire me? Why can't you answer my question? Instead, and then she does it. She just talks like an old person here. Oh, okay, thank you. Northridge? Okay, thank you. Hi. Um, do you have plus sizes at this location? Uh, the, the biggest size you carry in the store is double XL. Okay, thank you. Double XL ain't big enough for you. That's crazy as fuck, dude. And like, how how far are you just going? Did you just Google like plus size stores that don't carry plus size selections or something like that, and just walked into stores? I don't know why these people set themselves up for failure. Like, what's the point of doing this shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing right now? That's like going into a now. That's like somebody taking a phone, right? Going into like a bar or like a club and going like, I can't believe. Let me ask this guy if he's drinking alcohol. Are you drinking alcohol? I knew it. I knew he drink it. This is gross. This is disgusting. Most retailers don't sell plus size clothes. Most 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 of them don't. You know why? Because it's not sustainable. And not only is it not sustainable, but like the clothes don't fit across the board for you guys. You guys are literally different body shapes and sizes, even at that same size. Like if you're a 15X, it's going to be different to another 15X. So there's that. And then also not many fat people even buy those clothes to begin with. Like, don't you think, bro, it's like these people don't really seem to under, it's like the people that think of like controversies or whatever. They go like all media sources are being controlled by everything. And like the society controls all this other shit. It's like, bro, everybody owns a phone. Everybody, like you don't think anything would ever come out about all this shit ever or like when people believe that the earth is flat right it's like so you want me to believe that all of the entire systemic structures right like society the government across the entire globe right they are all communitively coming together without any leaks at all ever and they're all trying to they're all convincing us for i don't know i don't know for what reason that the earth is a globe but you somehow know the truth. Like, why? that's such an unbelievable thing for me to fathom. You know what I'm saying? The same thing here. Um, the reason why fat, like these plus size clothes, like don't you think that if it was lucrative, they would do it? We live in a capitalistic country. 
dude, if they want to make money, the entire purpose is to impede the entire purpose of being in a capitalistic country is to imbue your shareholders with more money. Okay. Don't you think that if the, if it was going to make them more money, they would do it? Pardon? Do you have your plus sizes at the store? Plus exercise she's gotten all day, bro, for like the last four months. This location yes, or no? It's all the way to the double XL. Okay, thank you. All the way is crazy, bro. How offensive. Yeah, it's all the way to double XL. I mean, you know. Excuse me? Do you have a plus sizes in store at this location or no? Dude, why don't you just talk like you do in the... Do you have plus-size clothing in this store? Do you have plus-size clothing? Why don't you talk like that? We do, but only certain items. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the in-store goes up to 3X. 3X? Okay, yeah. awesome. Thank on you. On everything. It should be on everything, actually. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Pardon? Do you all have plus-sizes at this location or no? Sorry. Do you have plus-sizes in-store or no? Okay, thank you. No worries. It's like, what do you, you only going to, bro, who the fuck is really going to Forever 21? Have people, does anybody here shop? Like, I'm a, I'm a dude, right? I've only been in Forever 21 twice in my entire life. Pink, I've been in there twice, maybe. And I remember this one girl was like, you need to buy me bombshell. You need to buy me bombshell. I was like, I don't even know what that is. I'm not doing that shit. I don't think I've ever been in H&M. I don't even think I've ever even seen a Fashion Nova. I've been in Old Navy. Their selection sucks dick. Everything's like super expensive. Well, now let's have a conversation. What? Why would you want to be? Why? Why would you want a black obese Barbie? Defeats the purpose. <laughs> Damn. What is the purpose of Barbie? And no, that question is not. I think the purpose of Barbie. It depends on what you're talking about. Probably just to sell, right? Probably just to sell Barbies. I don't know. Like it, maybe the deep. What is okay? The deep purpose of Barbie. Like people don't buy toys anymore. Okay, I don't. I don't think like. If, like, a, a fucking seven-year-old girl was like, oh, I want a Barbie. I don't think any seven-year-old girl nowadays is going, I want to buy a Barbie. I think most of them are going, buy me an iPhone or buy me a tablet or something like that, right? Like, maybe 20 years ago. I know that. I know 20 years ago, probably people were buying Barbies. But nobody's buying Barbies anymore with the exception of, like, maybe guys that are in their 40s that are probably trying to collect them to maybe sell them or, like, put them on their wall. I don't, I don't think that there are many little girls trying to buy Barbies anymore. But maybe... What she's trying to say here is like the point of a Barbie is to be in inspirational to little girls, right? Maybe. Or like because they see a selection of different types of Barbies that that is going to be like inspirational or like inclusionary. So that way these girls are seeing a fat, obese, black Barbie. Therefore, if they are fat, obese, black human, that they can look to that as inspiration, right? I think that's what they're going to go for. Okay. Let's talk about and it. And if I, bro, I swear to God, if I explain that better than Samira can, dude, I'm going to be upset. What about my size? My race does not make me Barbie. You can, I don't, I don't think it really matters, dude. I don't even know why this is even a, a fucking talking point, bro. This woman real deal just be scrolling, like scrolling through her comments, like gotta find one that is the most undefensible, <laughs> the most un undefensible one, dude. I don't give a fuck if they're a fat Barbie. I don't think anybody buys them. If the company wants to fucking make fat black, you know, Barbies, dude, go ahead, man. Whatever, man. <laughs> they could do it. I don't think anybody's buying them anymore. Why am I not something that people can aspire to be? Pro pro well, it's fine for you to be black. Like, I don't think that's an issue. I don't think anybody's going like, oh, yeah, we don't need a fucking black Barbie, dude. Fuck that, dude. Let's get a Klan's member Barbie, too, if they're going to have a black one. I don't think anybody's saying that. Like, definitely being obese, though. That's an issue. We know that's an issue. And if you're, t like, bestowing upon children the misinformation of being fat is okay. I mean, it is okay to a certain degree. It just depends on what you mean by okay. It's not something to be striving for. If you're fat, I'm not going to shit on you. But it's also not a good thing. So, like, inadvertently, if you have fat if you have fat people that are portrayed in Barbie format and you're going, like, yeah, look how great it is. Oh, my God, it's so great to be fat. Like, kids are going to pick up on that shit. And once a fat kid is fat, they're fat for the rest of their life. Like, that is a... That's a thing that's going to happen, man. And that's not good because, like, that's a lifetime of just terribleness. Why am I not something you want people to be? Uh, probably the way you speak. I mean, that shit is terrible, man. I mean, I, it's not... What do you even mean? Somebody that I don't want... I, I, I want you to be you and I want other people to be themselves. And that's that's it. I, I would never look at Captain America and be like, man, I really want to be Captain America. I might do that sometimes when I look at Henry Cavill. 
because he's a gorgeous man. But like normality here, like generally speaking, most people are not gazing upon a Barbie and going, this is what I want to be. I don't think anybody's doing that. No, that's a weird thing to do. Okay. Now those questions, those are rhetorical. But if you found yourself trying to answer them, then I think you might be misled on what the purpose of Barbie is. Tell us what it is. Have a great day. The fucking tell us what it is. You can't just have a great day. Why? Man, dude, you, you can't just ask rhetorical questions when this person is actually asking a question, dude. Man, can you answer? Can you answer, dude? Is it? Whatever, bro. Ah, Lululemon. So glad you could join us in class. Let's dive right in. Damn, Hi, bro. Samira. Thank you for taking the time to connect and share your experience with our brand. Please know that our top priority is creating an inclusive shopping experience for all of our guests, which includes an inclusive size assortment in store and online. Well, we haven't introduced sizes beyond size 14 in all. Why don't you talk like this in real life, dude? Why are you being so condescending and so fucking preacher-like on the, on the TikToks, but you're never executing this shit in real life, dude? Fake, man, fake. And online. Well, we haven't introduced sizes beyond size 14 in all of our product at the moment. We're I don't know, I don't know much about women's sizes, right? Can somebody let me know, is 14 big? I know that sizes are different depending on where you go, but can somebody give me like a rough idea in the comment section? What a size 14 looks like? Is that, what is Samira? What is she like? A, if 14 ain't big, right? Is, is Samira like a 50? Like what, do you, what is she looking for exactly, man? We're continuously exploring ways to make our product more inclusive, which includes adding additional sizing options for our guests. We're currently looking to add more women's styles in sizes 16 to 20, introduce new size offerings for sports bras, and make our men's sizing more inclusive. Hallelujah to that, dude, but I would never go to Lululemon's to buy anything, dude. I remember one time, man, I walked into a Lululemon because this girl was like, I need gym clothes. Like, I'm trying to be a gym girly. And I was like, oh, okay, let's go and see what they look like, right? There was a fucking bodyguard at the front door. I was like, dude, what are you fucking protecting spandex, dude? What are you doing? And we walked in, and I looked at the leggings, and I was like, oh, yeah, these are pretty cool green leggings. And I flipped over the tag to see the price. That shit was like $70. And I was like, what? Dude, do I get the child that sewed the fucking clothes together? Like, why is it 70 whole dollars, bro? For what? This shit is literally, like, I can go to fucking Primark down the street and find leggings that are, like, the same quality as your shit for, like, 15 bucks. What are you doing right now? The same thing with the clothes and the hats and, the, like, whatever, bro. It's just, like, really expensive neon clothes. And they got, a, like, a black dude, like, looks like he's from Men in Black at the front door. As if anybody wants to steal your disgusting slop-ass clothes. But uh, I'd appreciate a sponsorship. It's Lululemon. That said, I'll be sure your feedback is heard by the correct team, and I truly appreciate you sharing your thoughts. I'd be happy to chat further about any other thoughts or concerns on your mind. Do you think that is, because like, think about this, right? I'd be happy to chat further about any other thoughts or concerns you have in mind. Do you think that you could just ask this person anything then? Do you think it'd be like, yo, you, you ever think about like aliens? Like, you ever think about like what they could look like, you know? Hey, what's your favorite pizza? You know, like you, 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 I would just love to ask that question. Just have a random conversation with whoever this is. If your top priority is being an inclusive shopping experience in store and online, here are a couple of things that need to happen. Finally, Samira is gonna be answering some questions. One, every single product in every single style needs to be available in all of your size offerings. Number two. Damn, that's fucking crazy, bro. Every single product? everything that's insane dude that's literally crazy samira you don't even believe that man that's some things just don't look good in certain sizes some things just won't even be able to be made in certain sizes that's crazy bro that's never gonna happen you need to expand your size range to above a size 20. damn Something at a 20 is laughable consider 20 small is 20 small can somebody let me know bro what is a size 20 man you want it to be you said size 20 is weak that shit's small to you? Damn, Samara, what you, what are you, bro? What are you, a size, like, 50? What is going on right now, dude? How much further we need to go? Like, what, size 50, 60, 80? How far up we gotta go? During the average woman in the U.S. currently wears a 16 to 18. So, so wouldn't that be... <sighs> so, if the average... <sighs> so, if the average is 16 to 18, and you think 20 is too small, how does that even make sense? How does that how does that make sense if the average size for a woman is 16 to 18 and you think 20 is weak? Didn't doesn't that even 
Does that not even make sense? Don't we make... Man, Samira be fucking contradicting herself in her own video. Please, Lululemon, do let the class know how you can justify going seven to eight sizes below the average, but only going about one to two sizes above. If, they, if they're in that range, then that means that they're making it for the average, right? And like I said before, most people at that size are not shopping for clothes. We'd love to hear from you. Thirdly, please do not act as though you are a champion of inclusivity when you are barely scratching the surface. I don't know why she focuses so heavily on this inclusivity topic. I think that it could be okay to have inclusivity. It just depends on where you're going with it because I don't think inclusivity is good just for inclusivity's sake. And I've heard, I've seen, I said this before, like if you're just pandering or you're just trying to include people within a bracket because you feel like you have to reach a quota and your intentions weren't actually to do anything purposeful, I, I disagree with that. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I just think that, for instance, if you're making like a TV show, movie or whatever the fuck, and you incorporate a woman in that TV show, when in reality, the TV show just sucks dick because this character was made for a man, but you just kind of copied and pasted in a woman, that's going to suck dick. Or if you just kind of say, oh, you would just want to like, most of these companies will say that bullshit. They'll just go like, yeah, we, we're champions for inclusivity. But a lot of the time, like that is very, very generic thing. That's like, it's like somebody saying like, oh yeah inclusivity so we want more people with like six fingers or something or like we want somebody with like i don't know like i guess a little bit shorter so we'll just make they can mean anything like it's such an ambiguous way of saying it it's literally a meaningless statement that unless they're getting into specifics don't even think about it it's like whatever man you have a lot of work to do so until then until you expand your size range until every single size is available in every single style never gonna happen that's crazy bro that's a crazy until one every single size is available in all of your locations until you use fat mannequins fat bodies to represent the face of your brand alongside the skinny bodies that you use Dude, what, bro you're asking for a lot right now so Myra real deal be asking for a ton thinking that this is like anything sustainable not claim to be inclusive. it's just not like the reason, again, the reason why they don't make these these things is because it's not lucrative. They're not making money off of it. And I know it sucks to say that because, like, you're fat and you want to be represented and stuff like that. But, dude, it's just not sustainable. Like, if they would, if they, if it made money, they would continue to do it. Now, I'm sure others have comments and concerns. I'll let them do that below. Feel free to read the comments. But until then, I hope you enjoyed class. Please, come back anytime. Influencers and celebrities Influencers and celebrities okay. Have got to stop dropping clothing lines And saying they're size inclusive When they stop at a 3X <laughs> A 3X isn't size inclusive You're fat dude 3X ain't big enough for you How many X's we need after that 3 huh How many 4, 5, 8, 15 How much more we need And furthermore When you go look at the size charts Damn. If I go yeah, I just you know what I really hate about Samira is that she's talking from like this realm of authority or like superiority and it's just like so difficult for me to take anything she says seriously because it's like she's looking down upon me almost, right? Isn't that weird? I just just the way that she approaches situations like this. Like nobody should be talking to somebody like this. And I understand this is like her thing. Like this is the way that she talks in order to get people to like enjoy her content, but I don't like to be talked down upon even in a video format type of thing, right? I just like Talk to me like I'm a real person. Talk to me like I'm an adult. You know, talk to me like I know something, dude. Why Why is it always got to be like, how do you know I'm not on your side? You know, like you, you're talking to me as if like I'm an asshole. But I'm not an asshole, dude. I, I mean, I may disagree with you, but I'm sure we, we probably agree on like most things. Going to the inches and your 3XL is actually the equivalent of a 1X. Like I said, bro, um, these clothing companies, like they cannot cater to all plus size bodies because a plus size body at 3x compared to another plus size body at a 3x ain't gonna be the same the same thing for like as you go up it becomes even harder because now you have to adjust for things like girth and like the size of somebody's leg or like it's just really difficult because body proportions are not going to be equal okay it's just not and it, it's way easier to make a small medium large and i guess go up to an x or like 3x i guess way easier than going above that because like bodies are at least uniform like they're they're most people's bodies are shaped the same like most people roughly i mean all you really have to account for is like the wideness and the tallness of somebody's like shoulder lift and like again most clothes will fit people at those sizes right uh, but once you start getting up higher than that, it is like almost unfathomable to make clothes of those sizes for everybody to fit into. That's why when Samira says like, we need all these clothes across all spectrums to be the same sizes across all those spectrums. I always think like, that's crazy, Samira. Like there's no way they're going to be able to do that. And even if they did do that, which is impossible, those clothes still wouldn't fit you because 
if it did fit you, it's not going to fit like Cindy Lou or it's not going to fit fucking Rebecca or whoever the fuck else. Because they're even though they're the same size as you, your body is shaped differently compared to that body. So like what would they even have to do? They'd have to make the same shirt in like 40 different other types of like body formatting styles in order to accompany those people. But again, not all bodies at that size are going to be accompanying that 40 format. So it's going to be like a hundred or a billion. Like it's never going to be possible. It's just... It's just not possible. It's literally not possible. We have an even bigger issue. Yeah, I know you do. It's called your weight, your bigness, the gut. Because now you're lying. Because now you're lying. And I'm not gonna name names. Why not? Call them out. Why not? I hate it when people don't name names, dude. Call them out. Speak the fucking truth, dude. Stand on your business. Say the names, dude. Stop, stop, man, stop being a pussy. Just say the names, dude. Don't, man, come on. Because now you're lying. Because now you're lying. And I'm not gonna name names. <laughs> because there isn't one example. Though I'm thinking of one example right now. Say it. There are multiple examples of instances where people have dropped clothing lines under this false guise of size. And Why don't you say the names then? If you have a big problem with this shit and you don't say the names, it just comes off as like you're just being a bitch. You know what I'm talking about? You're just like, you're just being a pussy, dude. Speak on the business, dude. If you have a problem with the brand and you got one in mind and this is the one that should be talking about it, why don't you stand on your business? Why don't you take, why don't you take up the mantle and actually talk about it? What are you scared? Why are you, why would you be scared, dude? You're a person that's, it's just like, it's dumb. It's dumb. Just, just tell us who it is. Inclusivity. Stop it. Who? Stop it. If you're not going to name names, I'm not taking anything you say serious. If you want to be size inclusive, talk to fat people before- Dad, you don't need to talk to fat people, not- <sighs> This is a dumb fucking- Because not all fat people are going to think the same way as you, Samira. You do understand that, right? So you don't even- You do not mean talk to actual fat people. You mean talk to fat people that agree with you. When you make a line, have fat models. When I say- And fat models aren't going to do anything either. Because if you have fat models, again, it's not like that fat model is going to be a perfect representation of all people at that size. It might just be an exaggerated version, right? As we know, when you get fat models or like people that are in these plus size categories, they might be a more favorable version of what the body would look like at that size. So like if you're 400 pounds, but this woman that's 400 pounds also, that's a plus size model, has all her weight distributed in the places that you want it to be distributed. So like thighs, butts, boobs, whatever. That person is not a reflection of how mo most people at that size are going to be shaped. So even a plus size model at that size is irrelevant. It's not going to actually help you. You would need to get like a billion plus size models that can perfect. It's never going to be possible, Samira. It's a, it's a thankless task. Nobody's going to do this shit. It's literally impossible. And you're literally over here claiming that these these fucking these big businesses right these these big these big corporations companies that are not making these plus size they're they're the problem and you have an inability to call them out by name why don't you call them up by name dude speak on it dude come on fat models i mean the ones with stomachs too not just the ones with breasts and thighs okay even that won't work do some research yeah actually really samira do some research huh look in the mirror look in the mirror when you say that be inclusive for proving my point you should stand on you should stand you should stand the the whole flight might lose some weight true once again you know people like you and them and them if you need a belt extender i think it's time to worry about your health that's a good point yeah that is a good point though 100 percent. i don't know why so many people like they just sit there and they buy like seat belt extenders or they they buy accessibility tools to try to make themselves more company to society when you can just lose the weight and you won't have to worry about that shit in general boo did i scare you i'm the gym i'm a gym membership damn that shit's hard <laughs> damn justify leaving comments such as these by comments i mean granted they're they're a little distasteful but the truth behind them like take you don't have to actually take the words, but you could take what's behind the words, the meaning of the words, which is like if you're fat and you're having problems navigating society and your solution is society should change, wouldn't it be better to just lose the weight and then be better for society? Claiming to care about my health. Yeah, I mean, I do care about your health. I want you to be with me for a long time, but your fucking weight is not going to help you with that. Fat people's health. Yeah. However, the hypocrisy that's been displayed in the comment section of my video removes the mask of moral righteousness you like to hide under. So where's the hypocrisy? Go point out the hypocrisy. And exposes you for who you are. Point it out. Violent bigots who hate fat people. Point it out though. You can't you're just saying a bunch of words. Where's the where's the bigotry? Where's the hypocrisy? Where is it? You can't just say words and just leave it there. That bro, you can't do that.
You 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 can't do that, bro. You have to give me the proof. You have the receipts, right? Show me the receipts. Show me, dude. You can't just say people in your comment section are bigots and, and, and they're all hypocrites. Show me why. Why are they hypocrites? Why? Man, I'm just sick of this shit. Like, I, I just don't understand how you can say all this bullshit and not back it up with anything. You're just talking. You're just saying nothing, bro. And there's simply no rebuttal that would adequately conquer my analysis. What kind of fucking terrible response video is this? Why even make a video if you couldn't respond to it? Is the point of your video, oh guys, even though I'm going to respond to this, these comments, I'm not going to respond to these comments. Why even make the video then? What the fuck? If you're too good to make the video, response video, why even make the response video? That's dumb, Samira. That doesn't make sense. You, all you're saying is like, I don't have to, oh, I, I, I don't. I don't, you can't fire me, I quit. That's basically what I'm hearing. Like, that doesn't prove a fucking point, Samira. You're not a bigger, well, you are a bigger person, but you're not the bigger man for going, I'm not gonna make a response video. That's like somebody saying like, oh, I would never, I would never call that ugly, disgusting, transformer head looking bitch. I would never say anything disrespectful to that person. I would never say that because I'm a good person. And I would never say anything about that tuna fish, that tuna fish neck bitch. I would never say anything about that. Um, but because I'm a good person, I would never say those things. I would never. That's what basically what you do. Why would you make a video claiming that you're not going to make a video? What are you talking about, Samira? Because you can't claim to care about my health while in the same breath shaming me for needing a belt extender. Which man, dude, you know, it's just like it's too easy for these people to just retreat. It's too easy for these people to just... <sighs> It's it's just too easy. Which is also designed for my health. It is designed for your health, but like you're, the solution is if if you are having this problem, right? And the solution for you is to just find something that you can make your life easier, like an accessibility option. Like I'm glad you have that, but it would be a whole lot healthier for you, and it would alleviate a lot, if not all, your problems if you just lost the weight. If you just lost weight, man. For my safety. So please remove the mask. Spare us from this cheap masquerade ball. Anyways, happy Mardi Gras. <laughs> it's just like, it's really bad too, to be like, I'm not going to lose weight because you told me that I need to lose weight and you said it in a mean way. Therefore, your point is invalid. That's a dumb way of trying to like disqualify a point, Samira. <laughs> or Fat Tuesday, should I say. She got that schoolboy Y'all don't want fat people to have seat belts on the airplane? No, it's fine to have. No, man, it's fine. How embarrassingly respectfully. Yeah, no, it's 100% okay to have seatbelts on a plane if you're fat, but that's fine, okay? Like, there is no but. Go ahead. It's totally okay if you're fat and you need a seatbelt extender. Great. Awesome. I'm happy they're there and I'm happy that you have the ability to use them. Isn't it, like, a little bit weird, though, that you're never looking at the solution for yourself, which is, like, lose weight and then you won't have to use those things anymore, like, literally anywhere? Like, I know you think that, like, oh, I shouldn't have to do that. But then then again, you can say that vice versa. Like, you shouldn't have to have that as an option. You understand? Like, it's just, you're never looking at it as, like, your problem. It's always society. I don't know, man. Like, fat phobia really just don't hit. I hope that's a silk pillowcase, dude. Everybody knows that if you're a black girl and you got black girl hair, got to wear a bonnet, got to have a silk pillowcase, got to ensure. And I got a silk pillowcase right now on my shit. I'm not even black. Like, 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 it don't make no sense. Like, oh, man, you point out one comment, and Samira thinks she has a point, dude. Actually, talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about. Come on, come on and talk to me, Samira. Like, 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 riddle me this, and ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Like, how you want us to go to the gym? I don't even need you to go to the gym. I just need you. Like, it's fine. No, I don't need you to do anything. I want you to be you, Samira. Go ahead, keep making these videos. They're very entertaining. I think they're awesome. You're incredibly cringy, so it's great to watch and react to. But it would be better, okay? It would be better for you and people around you if you decided to lose some weight and you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do anything really crazy. All you got to do, hear me out. All you got to do, lower the diet, lower the calories. That's it. That's all I'm asking. That's it, dude. Not too much, not too much. I do it every day. People do it every day. I mean, if you want to keep eating the way you're doing, that's fine. I love making videos on you, so keep going. You want us to eat a salad? Not a salad. Nope. It's fine. I hate this salad point, dude, because it's like, that just proves to me that you have no fucking idea what you're talking about, dude. Nobody's saying eat a salad. What do you think this is, like 2004? Nobody gives a fuck about salads anymore. You, If you want to eat a solid meat diet, like yeah, gay man, you can. You could totally do that shit. You'll lose weight. Guess what? Calories in, calories out. Eat whatever the fuck you want. As long as it's below your calories. You want us to take care of our bodies, but you... 100% take care of your bodies, bro. 
You don't want us to have a seatbelt? That's a that's a very fucked up way of taking this point, dude. If we're not set the be all end all should be have a healthier body, okay? I don't think this pro I don't think this person's saying that you don't this person's not saying that. This person's not saying that you shouldn't have a seatbelt extender. They're just saying it's embarrassing that you put yourself in a position to where you even need to ask for a seatbelt extender when you could just alleviate your circumstance by losing weight. That's the problem, okay? That's what this person is saying. And I understand that you want to gaslight to make it seem like this person said something that they didn't say. They didn't say that, okay? But I understand. Like, you have to do that in order to make a point because you don't have a point otherwise. You have to literally come up with a point. You have to battle your own ghosts in order to, like, even have anything to talk about. But we're not saying that you shouldn't have these accessibility options. You can. The issue is you're not doing anything else to improve your life. Like, you're just sitting here complaining about problems that you you, you don't even have to have if you just decided to take your own health in your own hands and decide to lose some weight. On an airplane... I don't know. It don't. It's weird. That's what's embarrassing. We're this whole video is embarrassing, dude. This whole video because you're fighting somebody that didn't even say what you said. Respect for me. Okay, Tiana aside, this is why we need better. Tiana wasn't a whale. <laughs> I think they need a better black princess, dude. Uh, the only one they have is Tiana. Tiana, whatever her name is, like Princess Princess Tiana from Princess and the Frog or whatever. And it's really disrespectful that 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 she was literally a frog. For like, I don't even know, like 80% of the movie, 90% of the fucking movie. And also the, the prince was literally, I remember when I first watched that movie, right? I was watching that shit. And I was like, dude, why is the prince literally default white man, but tan? That dude was literally had no fucking black features at all. That dude was literally a white guy. I don't care what anybody says, dude. Um, They need better black, but I, I almost couldn't believe that people like point out that movie as like the one black princess. That shit is crazy, bro. Disney got to do better. And then anytime anybody talks about it now, they're like, oh, we got Moana. Okay, I guess. I mean, sure, but Moana sucked. That movie was fucking ass. I don't care what anybody says, bro. We just need to do better, you know? Like if you're going to make a black princess, actually make a good black princess. Uh, if you need a black superhero, actually make a good black superhero. I'm sick of people saying that. Look, I know this is going to be a hot take. I know it's going to be a hot take, okay? Hot take. Ready for it? Black Panther wasn't good. It wasn't good. I, I'm not saying anything against Chadwick Boseman. I thought he was a great actor in um, Civil War. I thought Civil War was really good, dude. Civil War was a very good movie, matter of fact, dude. I thought that movie was, like, very, very, very uh, good for a Marvel movie, right? Black Panther was ass. Black Panther was literal fucking garbage. And, um... I'm just sick of having poorly written black or female characters. And the reason why the movies are successful is because minority. That's just terrible. That shit is actually gross, dude. You shouldn't be going to movies because there's a black guy in a movie. You should be going to the movie because it's a movie that's good. And there just so happens to be a black guy that's playing in the role. That should not be like the main reason you go to like, oh man, I really love this shit because a black guy was in it. That's terrible. That's actually terrible, man. That shows me that you don't give a fuck about the actual movie. You don't give a fuck about the actual thing. You just care about the black guy being in the movie. You don't care what the dude was doing or what the fuck else. It's terrible. No, that's that's gross. That's gross, man. Anyway. But she's right. Um, if if Samira wanted to play as Tiana, dude, T Tiana was uh she was a thin girl. Respectfully. And she was working on her feet too, bro. She was in that fucking what was she in, dude? She was in like a shop or something like that, cleaning it up. Okay, Tiana aside. This is why we need better fat representation. Dude, what happened to your shirt, dude? You stretched the fuck out of this shit. What happened? What is this thing? In the entertainment industry, specifically in television and film. Of course, there's a lot of other things that we could get into, but let's talk about this right now. Since in respect to Tiana, <laughs> we want to talk about me being a whale. And of course, I've been called a whale, hippopotamus, snuffleupagus. I do not care. It, it, it don't hurt. Let's get more creative. Cool. Anyways... Who I would love to also see get more creative are the casting directors, the producers, the writers who can't seem to figure out how to not have fat people be reduced to comedic relief. Caretakers, unlovable, undesirable, ugly, funny. When it comes to these films. Like, I don't have a problem with any of this. I just hope that if, as long as the movie is good, as long as the movie is actually good right i remember when everybody had a problem where they were like oh ray in star wars you guys just don't like the movie because she's a woman and then nobody had a problem with the ahsoka tana tv show nobody had a problem with ahsoka in rebels or fucking any of these other shows like women are fine like nobody gives a fuck about fucking women being in these shits it's just like when you make terrible disgusting movies or whatever the fuck and 
I have to uh, I have to watch this movie and then you tell me I'm a bad person because I think it's a terrible fucking movie. Not because the woman is bad, because you made the woman bad, right? That's the problem. So it's fine. It's like Samira has her point here. Like I think that if you want more, I don't know, diverse casting in these particular films, movies, or whatever the fuck, because women or fat people or whatever the fuck you want, like it's fine. I just hope that's not the primary thing. Like, I just hope that it's not affirmative action hire because you need, oh, Samira said we need fat women in this role. Therefore, let's just throw five fat. That's not going to actually prove a point. It's not going to actually, you're still going to complain, right? That's really what it comes down to. Because if you just want, for instance, fat people in movie, that's it. Then we just throw fat people in movie. You're still going to be upset because that fat movie, that fat person was either a very bad cast or it was just not appropriate for the movie. And then in that case, you're going to be upset regardless. So wouldn't it be better if it was just let's make a good movie and cast correctly? Wouldn't that be the right thing? Wouldn't that be it? Instead of just throwing random minorities or people of color or whatever the fuck just because you need to reach a quota. That's that's the that's the bigger issue. That's why a lot of movies that come out like since 2010 have been literal shit because they just keep throwing minorities or women into roles that like they just like why are we even having this role here, dude? You know, like who's that guy? John Boyega literally said that he was like, I'm. A, they just cast me because I was black. They literally threw my fucking character away because I was black. He said that shit. Like it happens a lot. Like you're just casting people because they're black. That's sad. And shows. It doesn't make sense. If you're so good at your jobs, if you're so good at your jobs, then why can't you write any good fat character? We've been saying this for years though, bro. You know how many movies come out that do a disservice to the roles, bro? Literally, like, being in the Star Wars community, bro, I, I, sometimes I wonder, like, how the fuck did they fuck up? Star Wars, bro. You literally are a mul Disney multi-billion dollar company, bro. And these people had no plan. How'd they progressively make worse movies, bro? The first one, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, right? And then Rise of Skywalker. Literally not good, fucking terrible. Holy shit, I can't believe this movie was made. Everybody agrees. It's all bad. And then I always think like, dude, you're a multi-billion dollar company. How the fuck did you guys fuck up this bad? Did you not have a plan? No, you didn't have a plan. Holy shit. It's like a lot of times, bro, these, these decisions that are being made are like compromised decisions, right? And the companies are just seeing dollar bills and they have a quota to reach and they need to do certain things and that affects the art. It does affect the art. That's why like when a lot of companies create like indie titles or things like that, there's a lot more passion. There's a lot more heart in the in the design for the movies and stuff like that because they don't have to abide by the big corporations. They don't have to go. That's why like video games, the smaller video games are usually the ones that have a little bit more like flavor to them because like the bigger ones that are, they, that are made on repeat year after year after year, they're doing the same shit because they have to abide by the corporations. They have to abide by the big man. They, they can't say no. And that's what they have to do. A lot of these same things for these movies and big TV shows. They don't give a fuck, dude. How the fuck you make three bad Star Wars movies in a row and think there's not a problem? You know what I'm talking about? Like, these people don't give a fuck, bro. It's not about what you want. It's about what makes money. So, it's sad, but it's the truth. And it's not even necessarily about, like, representation. It's just, like, these people just don't know sometimes. Like, they put the poor... They put people that don't understand what these people want in positions that... They have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Like, has anybody... Look, I know I keep going back on Star Wars, but did anybody watch Obi-Wan Kenobi and think, Jesus fucking Christ, I think the person that, like, wrote this script literally had never watched Star Wars or wasn't a fan. Like, you need people that are actually invested in the art in order to make these particular pieces. And it's really sad because we live in an era where there are so many people that are passionate about these particular things, but these people are not lucrative when it comes to making money, you know? It's just not. And it's... It doesn't sell, I guess, or at least it doesn't sell to the same degree that they want it to, and it's really sad. If you look into reality TV, why don't you cast any fat characters? The, the reality TV one is kind of crazy, dude. What reality TV you want? Like, Love is Blind, dude? Man, nobody... Man, dude, let me tell you something, okay? If you're watching like, Love is Blind and you're upset that it's not a fat couple, dude... Man, what are they even going to do? Like, these, they take these fat people, they take people, like, to different locations around the world to, you know, celebrate the honeymoon and shit. Like, the fat people are just going to sit down on the bench for the whole fucking thing, dude. It's not, it's not cool. Like, you're going to complain about the room service not being on time? If you're so good at your job, if you can win all these awards, if you can win Emmys, Oscars for your work, but you can't seem to figure out how to include fat people in a way that respects their humanity and their existence? Well, like you're, to a certain degree, you would have to suspend disbelief, right? Because like sometimes what you see is like, it's all right if there's a movie where 
it's like a woman character and she's beating like really really big busky men there she's being their asses like it's alright if she was like a superhero or something like miss marvel whatever the fuck her name was uh black black widow makes a little sense too because she's like a super spy or whatever the fuck but like sometimes you see this shit and you're like dude this woman is like five foot two she weighs like 110 pounds and she just beat like i don't even know like trained killers that weigh 210 you know it's like you gotta suspend your disbelief really fucking far and the same thing too when it comes to big people in movies like what do you fucking want you think some guy is going to be attracted to a woman that's like five foot two 350 pounds and go oh i'm just in love with her i just really love the way her grease stains beyond that shirt she's wearing that shit was so good in my mouth when i was just like licking something i don't know what it was it was really flavored though a lot of spice a lot of seasonings i don't know what it was it might have just been the bed matter of fact i don't know like it's just like you'd have to really suspend your disbelief i'm not saying you can't do it but it's just to a certain degree you're gonna have to go really far something's not snapping and I don't understand it and I don't understand it and so here's my thing Tiana can be whoever y'all want it to be I, I want I want um I want Brad Pitt to play as Princess Tiana because I can have whatever I want right Brad Pitt will kill it. here's my thing Tiana can be whoever y'all want it to be I do not have to be Tiana yeah no shit but I do hope that as we advance forward in our thinking and our logic, as we begin to unpack our fat phobia that should have been unpacked decades, centuries ago, <laughs> that we figure out that fat people can simply just be characters who happen to be fat. And know that we are doing what though? Like what movie do you want to see them in? Doing what? Like in a rom com? Sure, we can have fat people in a rom com. Can't guarantee it's gonna sell. Can't guarantee it's gonna sell. I don't even think they make rom coms anymore. Do they make rom coms? I don't know. I don't know. What the fuck are they gonna sell, dude? You want a fat person as a superhero? I mean, sure. I guess maybe we can get the right one, but then like you guys would probably complain about that cast because you'd be like, oh, it's still fat. It's still like fat because of the character. Like, dude, you're not gonna cast a fat fuck. You're not gonna cast a fat fucker as Superman. That's not gonna work, right? Nobody's gonna respect that shit. What do you want? Like, where do you want these fat people at? Like, you want a fat guy to be playing, like, Julius Caesar? Like, what do you want, dude? How far? Like, where do we go, man? There needs to be some type of consistency, right? No? Just throw fat people into roles? Is that what I'm hearing, dude? Like, what do you want exactly, bro? So, I never gets into that. Simply just be characters who happen to be fat. In what roles? And know that we are worthy of representation, too. It's fine to say that you're worthy of representation, but you guys are literally... If you're fat, you're fundamentally annexing yourself from certain positions right we know that and you're not going to be able to play in certain roles that's obvious right in the same way that like i don't know fucking brad pitt's not going to be able to play as like an african king because he's white right naturally um i guess depending on where in africa like he probably plays like ptolemy or something like that but it's it's just like to a certain degree if you're fat you're gonna have to annex yourself from certain roles and if you're upset that you're annexed from those certain roles i mean we can we could do it like i'm sure that there would be companies out there somewhere that would like be like oh yeah sure we'll just totally hire like a fucking 400 pound woman to play as a viking king i'm sure that's like fine i guess like i'm sure that that would be okay i'm sure somebody will watch it but like most people are not going to respect that most people are going to look at that and be like what the fuck dude what the hell is going on here like why is there a fat woman playing as like jfk i don't fucking know like what do you want like how how far do we go how do we do this please describe it we are desirable just kind of i don't know about that one i mean that's kind of crazy as fuck to say that shit it depends on who you're talking to bro i don't know about that for me and know that we are worthy of representation too we are desirable <laughs> contrary to how you like to portray us in your films in your shows in your reality shows if we even get portrayed at all <laughs> i mean you can even look at fashion week what percentage of models were plus size? Oh, okay. But that's a conversation for another time. I don't think I think Samara got a lot of issues and I feel like she's focusing on things that really don't matter. Like it's just so weird, bro. If you want like fat representation, why are we talking about like models? Like why are we talking about like these weird, like really, really one off like how many people are fucking actors? Not many people, dude. Not many fucking people. And not many people are also 
runway models though like i mean i get it like you want more representation but like dude that's a weird that's a like wouldn't it be better to have like more representation in actual society instead of models and tv like i don't know it's just like so weird these people like have these like they just want like the highest positions ever instead of like actual real world positions but i guess i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about it doesn't matter anyway uh you're a beautiful person thank you for watching the video in its entirety today let me know what you guys think about Samira down below. This was kind of a slog to get through. Samira is, like, really fucking crazy of a person, dude. And it's, she's really unhinged. She's not as unhinged as, like, a lot of people. I would really like to talk to Samira. But um, I don't think that she ever would. The problem oftentimes with these people is that they they don't get value from going outside their bubble. And they would... It, like the the payoff for them is like negligible. Like it'd be nothing. Like even if they got into a debate or they got into an argument with somebody like me, even if they won, they would get almost nothing in return. Um, but if they lost, their whole career is over because if somebody puts them points out like, hey, dude, you're fucking wrong about this and this is the reason, this is the reason, this is the reason, and they have no comeback and they can't say anything back, that's their, that's their career. Like these people literally build their entire lives off of like facades and like things that don't exist. So if they ever challenged on it, they crumble. They can't. They So like they never put themselves in a position to ever actually have to talk about these things. So what tends to happen is they just stay in their chambers they stay in their fucking echo chambers and they just hear the same shit over and over again because they never want to step out of it because they know if they do that's over for them so it's really difficult to ever have a conversation with these people but i would love to have a conversation with any of these people but um seems not that way like that one girl that literally said she was going to sue me and uh instead of actually watching the video she never watched the video she just got like caught in her ways dude these people literally have no idea what they're talking about and when they do when they know that they're wrong they threaten to fucking sue you or like mass harassment you shit which is crazy but it is what it is it is what it is anyway guys um we're gonna end the video here uh if you want to if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in i don't know let me think moss m-o-s-s -S, moss because like it looks like she's wearing some moss on her right there dude doesn't it the most green that she's touched in a long time but anyway, guys, yeah, write moss down below. Speaking of moss, um, I know you're organic like moss. Super organic, eating whole foods, eating that good, delicious, well-seasoned lubrication that you've been throwing in your mouth, forcing yourself to really indulge the beauty and the bliss of our society and, and acknowledging that it's not always about you, but it's always about you. Like being selfish in the right scenarios and in the process of making things about you, you make it about other people. That's amazing. That's really beautiful. And I love you for that. I really love you for that. So thank you for being so amazing, being so tolerant, being such a beautiful, amazing person. Thank you for watching this video in its entirety, by the way. You're an amazing person, especially if you made it this far. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description and the description of the channel, my Discord, Instagram, Twitter, and other things such and so forth. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. That was a that was a gay one hold on